Okay, today we are going to go through all things electronic energy and how we get them. Now I want you to uh, look at the picture in front of you and try to recall what we did in the class before this. And you're going to remember that the big takeaway from that, if you remember, was that if I have a coil of wire and I run, say, some kind of magnet either through that coil or maybe... Uh, in the example of the image on the right, if I just fly by the front of it, I will create a current. I'll create a current running through that wire. And that's pretty much what I want. I want to get some electricity, and the way I'm going to go about it is I'm just going to have some moving, some way I can move that magnet by that coil of wire. So, uh, let's just get into some of those details. Essentially what I'm talking about here is I want to create what's known as an electric generator. If you recall in the last class, the last thing I did is I took out uh, that wheel that I rotated with my hand. It spun the coil of wire inside a magnet and I had the lights go on. That was an electric generator. So basically what I'm doing is I'm transforming the kinetic energy of that rotating wheel and I'm changing it into electric electric energy I'm transforming it that is essentially how almost all almost all electric generation happens is by the use of an electric generator that is nothing more than rotating a wheel I'm going to show you a picture of this now, uh, there's some parts to this that you don't need to worry about. For example, these little uh, coil, these little um, cylinders over on this side. Um, some of you in classes have asked me about this, and I did explain that a little bit. Uh, it has to do with the fact that if I've got this coil turning and turning and turning and turning, uh, how do I get the wires to come off and, and connect to something else? Like, for example, this, this wire here should come out, and this wire should come out, and then it would attach to, uh, let's say, a some sort of light bulb and I want that light bulb to turn on yay well how am I gonna how am I gonna go about doing that uh, I would have to uh, make these coils that would help connect these two wires that are at the time rotating round and round and round and round and round and uh, I would need to figure out how to uh, basically uh, connect connect this rotating thing to to an outside wire uh, i do it by the way of brushes i invite all of you to check out the electric generator that i showed you in class it's still sitting in my lab happily sitting there and if you rotate that wheel you can take a look at it a little more carefully and you can also notice that at the end of the 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 rod that is rotating you'll see little pieces of metal connecting to other pieces of metal and uh, you'll get a sense of how those things connect but just so it's clear, this all this stuff right here, all this stuff right here, you don't need to know. Okay, I don't. I'm not going to ever test you on it. It's just something that's kind of interesting. And if you want to really get into some of the details of the machinery, uh, you are by all means welcome to go check that out. No, it's really this over here that I want you to pay attention to because, uh, for example, here I have the coil of wire. This is just simply. Um, and it's a little coil here that is filled up inside with a bunch of electrons uh, because everything is filled with electrons and I'm interested in this one uh, I know it's I know it's actually going over here but let's just pretend it's a coil just simply one single loop of wire uh, and it's filled with all these little electrons all inside the wire all in a big row and what I'm gonna do you can see the orange uh, arrow here I'm going to rotate it I'm gonna I'm gonna put my hand let's just just put my hand on this I'm gonna turn it over here and that will make uh, I'm gonna turn the the wire so that it rotates all through this uh, this space here and in this space I'm gonna draw a few lines here there's a magnetic field that is going from north to south in, in these what I, what I call field lines now um, in all classes everyone's asking well what what do you mean by this field line uh, what I'm just trying to say is that in here is a, um, a, a an energy uh, field 
that has the potential to create a force. Now, in this case, if I have an electron, let's say, let's just look at, um, let's look at this electron right, right here in the wire. This electron, because it's spinning, is actually moving upwards right now. It's it, because if you think about it, if I'm rotating, in this case, clockwise, um, at this moment, this electron is moving up and it's moving up against this magnetic field and actually as it turns out um, I'm just gonna quickly pick another color let's try let's try an awesome I don't know what is that orange this thing is actually feeling a force and that force is pushing it in this direction along the wire kind of interesting um, there's a lot of math rules to how this works but basically I need to be moving this way the field needs to be pointing this way and then I get a force that's sort of if you almost think of it I almost have this one going in the X direction this is going in the Y direction and my force will point in the Z direction you don't need to know any of this the big thing I just need you to remember is that if I have a coil of wire in between uh, two magnets basically inside a magnetic field if I move it through that magnetic field I will get a current going and this is basically how all current all electric generators work is I'm I need to rotate something inside of some space I make so let me just uh, let me just erase all that yeah, 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 yeah. okay oh erase my little hand and uh, let's just go to the next slide very quickly uh, what we're looking at here is what are the parts of a generator what are the things you need to you need to know so um, you might have to pause the video because I'm not going to stick around here for very long but basically these are the three main important parts of any any electric generator there is a turbine in other words there is a sort of a uh, some kind of wheel that needs to spin uh, and so I need something that will spin that thing okay uh, it's going to come from some outside energy something is going to rotate that wheel now that wheel is going to be connected to um, well the axle or the shaft if you want to think about how these two things connect, think of the turbine as a wheel on a car and the shaft as the axle that connects to the wheel to keep it attached to the car. Uh, that's basically what the shaft is. It's just simply a rod going down the middle of the wheel. So it's going to spin if the turbine spins. If the turbine spins, the shaft will spin. And then that shaft will go into the generator and that is where I have, well, all that stuff I had before. This is all the inside of the generator is that I have the... the right here you would see this would be for example the uh, shaft um, picture instead of a little handle here I have a turbine a turbine in this case would be something that uh, let me see what can I say would be uh, maybe a big some sort of big wheel thing so picture instead of that I got some sort of I don't know a little wheel it's going around and around and around let's put some spokes on this wheel that would be my turbine over here and uh, that would connect to the shaft that's this thing right here and then that shaft connects into the generator which is absolutely everything else in this picture so those are all the parts that I'm worried about uh, you want to make sure you know about those three parts let's see so uh, let's see a picture of this just to get a better idea once again just like I drew the turbine is some kind of uh, pinwheel that has to be uh, moved along. Uh, people usually draw it like this little kind of almost uh, circular saw blade. Uh, but it comes through many, there's many shapes, many forms. It depends upon how I'm going to try to move it. And it will connect to this long shaft. The shaft doesn't have to be this long. I don't know why for this picture from the, from the book they've, they've actually made it so big. Uh, normally it's pretty short. But uh, then I'm going to have it go all the way into the generator. The generator is what is using all this motion to create electrical energy. If I look closely into the generator, you can see here, I'm just looking inside. There it is, that coil of wire that is rotating between two magnets. That's all inside that black cylinder. And that is what is making the electricity. So I get two wires coming out of my generator. I get, for example, the light bulb going on. So this is basically the big points boom I've got a wire loop rotating inside a magnetic field right that's that's that right there this creates a force 
a force is pushing all the remember all the little charges there's all the little charges inside the wire and they get because it's moving in a magnetic field I am going to get them all moving along these ones will move this uh, this way uh, these ones on this side will move this way I, I won't get into them you don't need to know the math just know the basic idea that I'm getting a force on those uh, little charges and since I have all these charges moving why that's what I call electricity electricity is nothing more than charges moving along a wire and that's how I get it done so if we need to rotate a turbine how do we get it to spin the spinning is the kinetic energy that is going to be transformed into electrical energy in my generator but to get the kinetic energy to spin the wheel that might have to come from another type of energy and I've got many ways to do this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go quickly through each type of electrical generation all of these except the last one the last one's different but all of these will be using turbines connected to shafts connected to generators the only thing different about every single one is how do I get the turbine to spin that's it that's the only thing I'm interested in here so let's uh without further ado let's take a look what we got so first one hydroelectric power what do we got here take a look at it I've got water I got a big pile of water that I have made well it's it's way higher than the water over on this side and that's actually the whole point of this uh, I make a big dam uh, make a dam basically stopping the water from being able to pour uh, across and it slowly starts filling up an area getting higher and higher and higher and uh, basically that's the whole point is that I want the water as high as possible you might remember me talking about how if I take a ball and I hold it up in the air and it falls I have started out by giving it potential energy but then as it falls that potential energy begins to transform into kinetic energy kinetic energy being energy of motion and the faster something is the more kinetic energy it has so if you think about that if I was if I was like this little little person uh, let's just put a person here and I, and I hold up a ball and I, I'm gonna let the ball and it drops it goes thunk um, it has some potential energy at uh, point one but then at point two it would have technically no potential energy because now it's on the ground there's the ground but just before it hit the ground it would have a lot of kinetic energy now you can picture someone who then uh, here here's a big ladder it's a horrible ladder but picture oh my god this is the worst drawing in the world but on the top of the ladder picture another person uh, is is leaning out uh, there we go and holds up a rock and that falls and you would agree that this person had at, at this point had a lot more potential energy because uh, they were much higher and you know that they had more potential energy because when all that potential energy transforms into kinetic energy at the bottom you know that that ball will be moving much much faster at the bottom so that's a good sign that height has a lot to do with increasing my potential energy and the same thing is going to happen here because here's the whole deal I'm going to get the water up high and then I'm going to let the water come through like a little hole let's say there's a little hole here and then the water goes whoosh down Whee, water comes all the way down to the bottom and because it was up high by the time it's down here it's flowing through here really fast I got a lot of uh, a lot of speed a lot of speed yay speed and so because of that I should be using my pen and because of that I also have a lot of kinetic energy and so in here is my turbine so let's just make my turbine something that looks something like this and as the water passes by it it makes it spin here it goes spin 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 and boom I get my spinning turbine and that connects to the generator through the shaft 
And so once again, I got my turbine moving because initially I had a whole bunch of potential energy up here. The water went down and became really sped up. Therefore, lots of kinetic energy and that helped move the turbine. And that is essentially how uh, hydroelectric power works. And that's how most of the energy in Canada works. Most of our energy comes from hydroelectric. Um, it's mostly how we do it. I, now, I know uh, some of you will have a lot of questions ab about all these different types of uh, power and electric generation. Um, so please write down a few questions you have about each of these things I'm talking about. Uh, so you can so you can ask me later about things that are still bugging you in your head about like okay um, for example uh, a person in another class asked uh, hey uh, is there any um, environmental impacts on using a dam uh, does that actually cause damage to the environment and uh, another person asked hey uh, once the water falls down here uh, how's the water get back up how's the water get back up to the front um, these are really good questions. Uh, if you can answer these yourself, bravo. But if you uh, come back to class, you're like, you know what? I still don't know how to answer some of these. You should be asking me. So be sure to bug me about that. Uh, okay, so let's move on. So right now, hydroelectric power is taking potential energy, changing it to kinetic energy, which changes to electric energy. Next one. All right. We got a very popular one. This one is the burning of fossil fuels. This can be either coal or gas. This is where we're going to change thermal energy into kinetic energy. Uh, you might see what I have here in brackets. I'm saying from an increase in gas pressure. I'll get into that in a second. So I go thermal to kinetic to electric. So let's, uh, let's follow the little diagram here. Let's see what we got. So first we're going to start off with coal. Um, basically, I dig this stuff up from the ground. Now, why am I using coal or gas? Uh, the main reason is what I can do with it over here in the furnace. In the furnace, I light it on fire. And coal and gas produce an enormous amount of energy when I burn them. Uh, they have a lot of potential chemical energy in them. And so... I guess technically, really, I'm saying I've got potential chemical to thermal, to kinetic, to electric, if I really wanted to go through all the different types of energy. But uh, I kind of start at thermal here. But basically, the idea is that coal and gas, I don't need that much of it to produce an enormous amount of heat. And what I'm looking for is to make a lot of heat, which is uh, what you'll realize is why we don't use, for example, uh, wood. Wood is, is great if you want to heat up a home but if you're looking to create enormous amounts of heat energy uh, you really want to start with coal or gas it's just going to produce way more energy uh, and and that's basically why we use it now what you'll notice here is that i'm creating all this heat but i've got these kind of blue this blue pipe that's slowly turning white and what is that well let, let's just go over here what's what's going to happen is that i'm going to have this uh, reservoir of uh, water and the water is going to go you know come through it's cold water right now but as it comes through these pipes here as it's going through the pipes it is getting heated up by the by the fire of the coal this is really all i'm doing it's really all of what i'm up to is to heat up a bunch of water and i'm going to have this going through here in very very thin tubes and it immediately changes the water into steam so that when it comes down here i've got all steam steam yeah yeah it comes through here and then whoosh flies through this area and looky looky i got turbines so the the force of the steam flying through these tubes will cause the turbines to spin which is connected to a little tiny shaft here here's a little tiny shaft that then is connected to the generator and the generator makes the electricity there's the electricity going away we Electricity, yay, electricity, electricity. Yay. So um, you might want to say, okay, but what about what about these pipes here going up like this? So the idea is that you create um, a lot of hot air, but I want this to go back to cold water so that I can do it all over again with the same water. So what happens is that the water is coming down and as it comes down 
these pipes of cold water chill it down again so it's you can you can see here the little little dots here and stuff this is where the steam now is no longer steam it's changing back to water cooling right down so i can do it all over again and i do this by taking some water from here uh, with all the fishies and stuff there and i bring all the water in uh nice cold water i bring it through uh these pipes that then uh come back out and uh, uh spills back into the lake but what I do get is uh, this cold water uh, freezing back up. Well, not freezing. It's not gonna. It's not gonna turn into ice. But chilling it down enough where it's just water again, and I can put it right back into the tubes leading through the furnace again. So there's kind of a uh, one set of pipes where I have water that's turning into steam, that's blowing past the turbine, getting chilled and turning back into water again, and going through the whole cycle again. And on this side, I just simply got cold water coming through and uh, going back into a lake that I'm continually using to chill out the water. Um, it should be mentioned that also over here, I also have uh, what is pr pretty much the problem of all coal and gas burning is that I create all this uh, crappy smoke and uh, specifically carcinogenic, carcinogenic smoke. And that means that the big annoyance or, or horrible byproduct of any kind of burning fossil fuels is going to be the fact that it produces carcinogenic smoke and pollutes the atmosphere enormously. Uh, this is the big problem with this particular form of uh, energy create electric energy creation. So um, it, it has its drawbacks, let's say this. And for the most part, uh, we are not too interested in, in using it if possible. Uh, but uh, it is still used uh, pretty much around the world, but most countries are trying very hard to get rid of it, to stop using it and reverting to different other forms of energy generation. Uh, Canada actually is fairly lucky. We produce ours mainly with uh, hydroelectric and nuclear power. We actually have quite a bit of uh, nuclear energy uh, generators. Um, which technically are pretty clean as well as far as energy is concerned this doesn't have a lot of horrible byproducts it does have one it does have one but uh let's go through it rather quickly what do we got we've got nuclear energy changing to thermal energy to kinetic energy from an increase in gas pressure once again what am i talking about there same as before when I say increase in gas pressure, I am talking about steam. Steam uh, is going to create a lot of pressure, and then it will change to electrical energy. So, in a sense, a nuclear uh, power uh, generator is actually uh, incredibly similar to when we burn coal. It's almost exactly the same thing. So, for example, here you go. Here I've got my water. This is water in here. It's getting heated up. It is going through here as steam. Once again, look at that. It blows past the turbine. It goes through again, and it keeps doing that over and over again. And the turbine spins. That makes the energy, the electricity. There's the shaft right there. And I get my electricity. And once again, I have cold water. That is coming from some lake nearby. And that water comes through and chills out the steam again, turning it back into water so it can go through again. This water is looping back, um, but um, the heat is a lot uh, higher than what you would produce in, say, coal burning. This is actually, uh, nuclear power generators produce an enormous amount of heat. And so what you get is you get all this smoke uh, coming out of the giant nuclear power smokestacks. And a lot of people really feel that these are big, dangerous piles of smoke. Um, this is actually, if you look at it, what's happening here is I'm just bringing back hot water. So this is actually really, really clean. This is why you can always tell if it's clean smoke, if it's white. White smoke is actually quite clean. And it's a sign that you're not actually looking at smoke. Uh, you're looking at uh, water vapor. So nuclear power uh, smoke, technically smokestacks are not smokestacks. They're water vapor stacks. That's actually what they're doing. Now, how do I get the heat? Well, that comes over here. So what I have is I have a small little, you see the little red square. I've got a little square of uh, radioactive material 
and it is producing what we call a chain reaction, uh, a chain reaction where uh, atoms are splitting and releasing energy, enormous amounts of energy, and they're hitting other atoms that are also uh, splitting apart and, and sending out more energy. And uh, I basically, in a nuclear reactor, the idea is to control the rate of how many times they're having those chain reactions. And this uh, pink area is basically uh, heated water. And that water gets really, really hot. And so the water is coming through, it's coming through the pipe, it's heating up this other blue water, and that's the water I'm using to get the turbine. So this never touches the other water, uh, mainly because the water in here is highly radioactive, highly radioactive. And I don't really want to use it anywhere else. I don't even want to give it to anyone else. I just want to use the heat it produces. So this water and the radioactive material stays in here. And it's pretty safe, uh, all things considered. Uh, it turns out that radioactive radiation coming off of this like this actually gets completely uh, held back and absorbed by the water uh, that it's inside. Uh, pretty much radio uh, radiation cannot go any further than about a meter inside of this water. So it's pretty safe. Uh, you, could, you could stand over it and, and look inside. Hey, look at that. Look at that. I, I, woo, look, I see radiation down there. And you wouldn't be getting hurt by it. Uh, most people still get very afraid of nuclear power. Uh, it, it does have these negative ideas in our heads. We can't help but think of scary things. But it's actually pretty clean in many regards. The biggest problem, of course, is that no matter what, sooner or later, this, this material here is going to finish reacting. It's going to be used up. It takes a while to use up, but it's still going to get used up. Uh, so i got to get rid of it. And that's my big problem. Where do I put it? And it's radioactive. It's going to be radioactive for thousands of years, which is a big problem. It's not like it's going to just be able to be thrown out somewhere and, and in a few weeks I can take it out and it'll be dead. Nope. It's radioactive from a really long time. So I got to do something about that. I got to get rid of it somehow. And that's actually the biggest problem that most people have is trying to figure out the disposal methods of not only the radioactive material, but also this pink water. It's not actually pink, but this water here is also, because it's been mixing in around the radioactive material, is also very radioactive and has to be disposed of along with the radioactive material. Uh, and that's basically how it works. If you want more details, once again, guys, if you want more details of how some of these things work, bring the questions so if what i'm saying right now is not satisfactory and you're still like you know what i still don't understand how this nuclear power thing works then um bug me bug me that's the whole point uh be ready for uh asking some questions in the next class that's nuclear power what do we got next ah uh, wind energy now wind energy is pretty darn simple kinetic to electric. I, I don't really have to say very much with this one because holy cow, is it easy. Um, basically the turbine, well, well, there it is. There's the turbine. There's, there's the turbine. There's the, I can, I can't even see the shaft, but there's a shaft there. And then there's the generator. Boom. All done. Uh, that's all I need. How am I making it move? Well, I, uh, uh, wind, wind, wind is pu pushing the turbine. Yep, the kinetic energy of the wind is moving the turbine, which then moves the generator, and that's it. That's, uh, yeah, that's wind energy. Now, there's a few more things to think about. First off, uh, what do I do with the energy? Uh, because the wind isn't blowing all the time. The biggest problem with wind energy is really that, first off, uh, these things are really, really big. I know it looks like a little fan, but... Um, I just want to uh, bring your attention to to right up here. That's uh, that's basically where a person could be standing. So so just to get a sense of how big some of these things are, that's 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 I'm probably drawing the person a little too big. Let me try this again. Um, these things are big. Like they're not. These are not small. These these fans here. There we go. He's like that. He's a little person. Okay. 
So that's the size of a person. So you can get a sense that these these arms of the turbine are huge. Holy cow, are they huge. Um, and so there's a bit of a construction cost. They, they take a bit of money to build. But once they're built, things are good. The problem really is because wind is not constantly blowing. Uh, wind is kind of cranky. It's uh, like, for example, if I have a, a hydroelectric dam, I can pretty much guarantee that I'm always getting water coming down. I'm always going to have water. Wind, uh, it might be a bad day. Uh, might, the wind might not be blowing. And if the wind's not blowing, then the turbine doesn't blow. And that's the bottom line. So with wind generation, wind uh, energy, uh, what we generally do is we have to store the energy rather than just continually feed out. So what usually happens is that the generators here and the wires go all the way down to uh, a battery. So usually um, a lot of these things are using a little positive, negative. Um, I make a little battery here and I store all the energy I make and I keep putting, you know, and then I get another battery and I store it in there too. And then I keep, I get another battery and I store it in that one. I, I basically build up a lot of energy that I can get out at another time. Because what's going to happen is that that way I don't have to worry about the fact that the wind is down that day. I can just, I'm always feeding from batteries, which are consistent. So I basically, I'm using this to store up energy that is used later. That's essentially how uh, wind generators work for the most part, simply because, uh, yeah, uh, they, they, they can be exceedingly cranky in terms of whether or not I get wind that day. So that's, that's wind energy, but also uh, incredibly clean, like really clean. Uh, I'm, I've, I'm not changing anything like radioactive material. I'm not harming the environment as I might with a dam. Um, you could argue that if, uh, you know, uh, if there was like, I don't know, let's say, um, uh, uh, oh my God, that's the worst bird in the world. Okay, let's just say that's a bird. Uh, yeah, like if there's a bird, and that's that's a pretty big bird considering how big I made a person, so that's not quite a bird. That's, 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 that's a dinosaur. Yeah, okay. But let's just say a bird came along and, no, oh, okay, splat. Oh, that would be. So there, there's a few things that could go wrong, I guess, uh, but not a lot. And I think if a bird is uh, is going to run along and get hit by something that's about the size of uh, a football field, uh, that bird shouldn't be alive anyway. Stupid bird. Should have gotten out of the way. I'm being cruel, but okay, let's move on. <laughs> ocean. Ocean energy. What do we got here? There's actually two ways we can use the uh, ocean energy. It is almost uh, um, the same as uh, turbines for uh, wind energy, though. So I am, once again, using kinetic energy from either uh, an increase of fluid pressure or just simply the kinetic energy of the water moving. Now, what I have here is a picture of two ways it happens. Now, uh, a very common way is that on the ocean floor, we have uh, turbines and uh, the water basically flows by it and just like it would with wind it makes the turbine spin so this is in in essence almost identical to how uh wind energy works uh, with the big windmills up in the sky now i've got big windmills on the floor of the ocean um, that's one way we do it there's another way we do it actually which is kind of interesting and this is what we call this one, so this is using uh, what we call the the current. Uh, let me see. It's the current of the water. That's what this is. So uh, basically, kinetic energy of the current of water. This is different over here. So what I got here is I've got a big container um, that has uh, an, uh, space inside, and then I have one opening at the top with the turbine little propeller, a uh, little fan. And what happens is that as the water goes up and down, and water goes up and down, as uh, you know, just by simply looking at, say, the waves as they hit the shore uh, from the ocean, I know that the, the water goes up and down. And as the water goes up and down, it's basically squeezing the air inside this space or, or flinging it in. And when that happens, the air has only one place to go, right through here. 
So this is air being pushed, pushed out. Um, or it could be air being sucked in because if the water level goes down, the air has to come from somewhere in this space and it's going to come from out here. So it could be or sucked in. And so what happens is that because of that, I will create kinetic energy of the air just like wind power and it will make the turbine spin at the top. So it's still using the ocean uh, movement, but the ocean movement is going to be making air move back and forth across a fan. So in that case, my turbine is being used by air. Uh, but in the case of over here, I've got basically the current of the water being the pushing force. And that's ocean energy. Okay. Uh, do I got any more? Yes, I do. So let's just erase that. Let's keep going. Okay, next one. Geothermal. Okay. This one is thermal to kinetic from increase of gas pressure to electric. Sounds very familiar. Sounds just like coal burning. And in a certain respect, it is. It, it really is. But it's using a different kind of source to get the heat. So the heat's coming from a different place. Uh, you might remember when I was showing all the demos of the different energy, when I did thermal energy, I showed you something that was called a Stirling engine. It, uh, it had that sort of a base. There was a base. And then uh, on top of it was a wheel. Looked like that. The wheel went around, and then there was like a little tiny piece right there that went chuka, 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 chuka. And you might remember it was going up and down. There was kind of a inside, there was a, a piston that was going up and down. And I did this by just putting it on a uh, pile of water, and I put some boiling water underneath it. And it made the wheel turn. And I said that was because one side was hot and one side was cold. That's essentially thermal energy. Thermal energy is created by having a difference in heat and cold on one side of a piston. And this is a basically how this works in many ways. I am going to get heat from the ground. Now, how am I getting heat from the ground? Well, uh, if you recall, um, I don't know how much uh, information you have of the, the way the Earth looks, but... Uh, you know, quick little lesson here. The earth looks like this. Uh, in the center is a big uh, pile of molten uh, rock. Molten rock. This is surrounded uh, almost entirely on the earth. Let me see. I'll just draw my very thin line here. So this is all here is what's known as magma, which is also uh, mo liquid rock. Liquid rock. It is so hot it's liquid rock. And then we have this very small little layer here, and we call this the crust. A very, very thin layer. That's what we call rock and the stuff we live on and everything. We, we really, and, and this is actually not very thick, but it's thick enough where we could never go down far enough to break through the crust. But it's actually really, really thin. Most of the earth is this hot magma. So... As you get closer and closer to it by digging down into the crust, um, the earth actually gets pretty darn hot. Like really, really hot. It increases pressure pretty quickly. Uh, I used to do um, tests uh, in what we call borehole tests. I used to be on the field and we would dig holes like this and uh, we would check the water levels. Uh, the water might be down here, say the water was down here and I'd have to get things brought down the hole and I'd have to check the temperature and even then, the temperature going down uh, even less than a kilometer. If I was going down less than a kilometer, the temperature itself would raise by at least 10 degrees. 10 degrees from what was up, up higher. So it, didn't take, it doesn't take much to actually dig down and get a big difference in temperature. So what you can do here, uh, the basic idea is that I'm going to use uh, hot water from, and, and have it go down to... Uh, basically deep into the earth uh, through some pipes that I've drilled. And then as it goes down, it gets heated up because of the heat from uh, the space down there, getting closer and closer to the magma of the earth. 
And then when it comes up, I get this. Basically, it's now been just like before. It's been heated up to steam. The steam comes down. It flies through the turbine. The turbine spins. Yay, generator electricity. And then it goes right back down, and I send it right back down to where it came. Go back down. So what we have is two wells, basically, what we call the production well, which is I am producing my steam, and then I have the injection well where I send back all of my uh, my water that uh, was steam, but by the time it gets back down there, um, well, actually, it, it cools and then turns back to uh, steam as it goes down there, uh, but just gets sent back into the earth. And that's essentially how geothermal works. It's an incredibly simple way of doing things. Uh, if uh, people are fairly smart when they're building a, uh, a new building, they usually say, hey, while we're at it, let's dig a hole into the earth and we can get some of our uh, electric energy for the building just by having the fact that uh, down there it's hotter. That's pretty much it. Um, I've, I've built a few of these. It's pretty simple. There's not much to it. I just need two pipes going down into the earth. Not exactly rocket science. Uh, so pretty much anyone can build these things uh, if you have the tools. you got to have the tools. I mean, drilling a hole does require a drill rig, so you do need those things to do it. But essentially what we're saying is we're taking thermal energy, changing it to kinetic by making that turbine spin, and once again, I got my electricity. Last one. Boom. Solar energy. So this is the one that's actually uh, different from all of them. Why? Well, it says right there in my note, there is no turbine involved. This is the only one. This is the only one where no turbine, there is nothing spinning. Absolutely nothing spinning. There is no movement through magnets. There is no rotating coils. This is not how you get electricity from solar energy. Now, the basic idea is that I get uh, solar power from the sun. You might remember our first class when we were talking about how um, basically the sun is producing what's known as electromagnetic waves. Uh, we like to call it sunlight. But basically what we're saying is electromagnetic waves are coming down from space, coming through the earth, and then I make them land on these uh, basically sheets of semiconducting metal and glass. Uh, they're, they're layered like sandwiches. There's, there's sort of one layer of glass. There's another layer of some semiconductor. There's another layer of something else. I forget what it is. I'm sorry. And then there's another layer of semiconducting uh, metal. And then the sunlight comes down. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and it creates a voltage difference, a sort of a positive negative difference between the two semiconductors, which produces a, an electric flow. That's basically how it works. But there is no moving parts with solar power. There's nothing. You might recall that uh, the, the little bug that I, that I had that I just simply stuck into uh, a window and got the sunlight on it and it started jumping around. It started jumping around because the electricity made a motor turn on. But I didn't need to make it turn on a motor. I could have it charge a, a battery or something or anything I wanted. The, the basic idea is that that black piece of uh, glass that was on its back was a solar panel. And all it was doing was transforming solar uh, visible light into electricity. Not much to say about it, but it is, holy cow, it is quite possibly the cleanest energy out there. Uh, there really is not much to it because if you remember me saying the entire Earth relies upon solar energy for, um, for all of its energy to stay alive, uh, we wouldn't have plants without solar power. We wouldn't have uh, very much alive on the earth if not for solar power. So it's it's pretty good that we're actually uh, utilizing this as much as we can and getting a lot of our energy from there. There is a lot of push for most governments to move into solar energy simply because of how clean it is and, and how easily it, it has really doesn't have very many byproducts. There's not really some waste coming off of this. I don't suddenly get... Uh, nauseous fumes or smoke or anything like that it just doesn't work that way I, I just simply get electricity now there's the problem of building the solar panels uh, you still got to make a factory to build the solar panel but once they're built uh, that's it 
that's all you got to do. So there's not a um, there's not a lot of pollution factors when it deals with solar energy. So uh, that is everything so far. Um, that's all you need to know. Get a few notes and remember what was the whole point. Uh, we were saying this. How do we get it to spin? That was the whole point of this entire video. How do we get it to spin? Each one of those things was in some way trying to get the turbine to spin, except solar power. But everything is basically the same idea. I want a turbine to spin, and I'm going to transform some energy into the kinetic energy of that spinning turbine. And that's it. Okay. Oh, my God. 45-minute video. I hope you had fun. Uh, see you next class. Bye.